Good morning. Welcome to Walt Engine Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning. It is a special day, Pentecost Sunday, a day special to all Christians throughout history, to us as a fellowship. We believe that God has a plan for us, and we believe that He is going to fill our lives with purpose this morning. As we look at the announcements in our bulletin, there are a few things to keep in mind. At 2.30 this afternoon, the Connections Band will be rehearsing. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, the Faith Matters Book Club will be meeting. Also at 4.30, our middle school and elementary school play rehearsal for Jonas Druthers will be taking place in the Breezeway. The youth meet this afternoon at 5.30. And there is also a session meeting this evening at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating communion together. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship.
salutation be pleasing to God, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord upon my soul. Praise the Lord.
What's up, WPC kids? I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is we can't meet together at our church today. But the good news is we'll be meeting together very soon, and I'm excited about that. You know, when you think about good news and bad news, none of us really want to hear bad news. But good news always helps us. It always makes us smile. It helps us know that life is good. One of the scriptures that we're looking at today reminds us that it's our job as Christians, as friends of Jesus, it's our job to go and to tell good news. It's our job to go and tell other people about how God has been at work in our lives. Sometimes people need to hear that God loves them. Sometimes people need to be reminded that God has a plan for their life. And Jesus knew that. That's why he told his friends to go and be witnesses, to go and talk about the good things that Jesus had done for them. Always remember, as Jesus' friends, we can help other people by reminding them of how good God has been to us. Let us go together before God in prayer on behalf of the world, our neighbors, and ourselves. Lord of all, we are unable to gather in one place. We grieve our inability to sit beside one another, sing together, and pass the peace in person. Even as we lament what is lost when we cannot be in the same physical space, we rejoice that nothing separates us from the love of Jesus Christ. And there is no barrier that can prevent the Holy Spirit's coming to us. United in Christ, bound by the Spirit, our community is real and strong no matter where we are. Confident in your promise to never leave us alone, to hear us when we knock and give to us when we ask. We are bold to pray for those on our hearts and minds. Send the Spirit's winds of your comfort to surround those who mourn. Stay close to those unable to be near those they love. Grant rest to the weary and give hope to those on the brink of despair. Kindle the Spirit's flame of reconciliation between those long estranged and peoples who call each other enemies. Bring healing to the sick and relief to those who suffer. Unleash the Spirit's power to bring justice to the oppressed. Protect us with your spirit so that we cannot abide the exploitation of the weak or the neglect of the vulnerable. Let your spirit loose in your church so that we can be bearers of your love in the world. On this day of Pentecost, when multiple languages resound through the universe, and all kinds of people proclaim your mighty deeds, deeds. Open the eyes of our hearts to take in all the glorious sounds, relish the beautiful sights, and rejoice in the precious diversity of creation. Your works and your words are too wonderful for us, and yet you enlist us to participate in your divine devil of salvation. We are astounded, perplexed, and bewildered, but eager through the gift of the Spirit to serve you with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Come, 
Holy Spirit. Engulf this frightening season with the life-giving, mercy-granting, joy-completing, justice-rolling deeds of our God. Open our mouths so that our lips may proclaim God's praise. Direct our actions in the world so the world will know we are Christ's followers by our love. <clears throat> Make us one so we can be ambassadors of reconciliation. <clears throat> Show us your vision and empower us to make your divine dreams our earthly reality. Make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
These things we ask in Christ's name and for His sake. Amen. Reading first a, a couple of verses from the Gospel of John that you, you've heard end of the 15th chapter. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, He will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. And then that familiar story, that story of that Pentecost day is those who just recently have witnessed the ascension of Jesus wait and the Spirit comes. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. <clears throat> and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, Standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. <coughs> Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Job. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour my Spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'm going to read a couple of other passages of Scripture this morning because that's where I want to start. It's Pentecost. This is the day we are going to reflect on the Spirit of the living God and try to get at what it means to talk about the Spirit of the living God. Do you remember Genesis 
first place we run into the Spirit. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void. Hebrew words, tohu abohu, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. <clears throat> Do you remember? Way back when the Bible started, and then there's this passage I want to remind you of from Isaiah 61. Jesus is in Nazareth. Jesus has gone back to His hometown after He's been out engaged in ministry. He has somewhat a reputation by this time. And Joseph and Mary's boy gets up in the synagogue to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They shall be called oaks of righteousness, a planting to the Lord. You remember those passages? That one almost gets Jesus killed. They drag him out to the cliff on the edge of town. They are ready to toss him off. But it doesn't happen, does it? We find out the crowd parted and he wanders through. We have a word at play in these passages we've read this morning. The Hebrew word is the ruach. Greek word is the pneuma. And interestingly, in both Hebrew and Greek, it is translated as wind, breath, or spirit. What does it mean to talk about the spirit of the living God? What does it mean to talk about a wind moving over the face of the deep? A wind blowing <coughs> through Jerusalem on that day talk about spirit. We're not necessarily really great about talking about the spirit in the Presbyterian church. That is a little way down our list. And this is the only day of the year in many ways <coughs> that we tend to do a lot of it because it's Pentecost. Now I had one of my teenagers in Gastonia say one day, we know what Doc Fry's favorite stole is. And the other teenager said, well, no, why would we know that? He said, it's the red one. Because that's the only day he gets to wear red and black like Davidson wears. Well, I, I'll confess, I kind of like it. It's odd. This is in amazingly good shape because I, I don't wear it for once a year. It doesn't get a whole lot of, of damage that way. But I've been intrigued as I thought about that <clears throat> today. What does it mean for us to talk about the wind, the breath, the spirit of the living God? What does it mean for us to wonder as the church about this endowment? The advocate whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything. That's what Jesus says and remind you of all I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I give not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. It's kind of powerful stuff too, isn't it? 
There, some of the passages that talk about the Spirit of the living God are enormously profound and provocative texts. What does it mean for us? I am intrigued because I think our world recently has had an amazing fascination with conspiracy theories. Have you noticed that? Every time I turn around, I'm reading about a new conspiracy. It's conspiracies in economics and politics, conspiracies uh, among people who would do us harm, all that kind of stuff. But I do want to say, you know what the word conspiracy comes from is the word conspire. And the word conspire means to breathe together. So, I'm going to invite you all out there in Zoom land this morning. I want you to take a deep breath. Now exhale. We have just hatched a conspiracy. We have just decided to breathe together. We have decided to breathe in that amazing gift of oxygen in this thin mantle of the atmosphere that God has spread around us. <clears throat> you know, the air around us is amazing stuff. That little band of oxygen and hydrogen and nitrogen and the light that surrounds the earth makes the difference between life and death for us all. It makes the difference between this being a vital and alive planet and being a cold, dark, barren cinder in space. See, I'm hatching a conspiracy. As we breathe together, we are participating in life on this earth from the beginnings to now. Take another deep breath. <clears throat> Was that a brontosaurus belch I just tasted? Or Maybe that was Mozart whistling. Maybe that was the last breath Jesus emitted from the cross. See, we're participating across the ages in all who have ever breathed and moved and had their being in this place. It is a living, dynamic relationship and all of it according to Genesis, is God breathed. God's movement. A wind from God moving over the face of the deep. Anointing it with life. Preparing it for our habitation. Preparing it for our service. It has lingered over the poles. It has wandered through the Amazon, it has in it the sulfur smells of Mexico City and the perfume of Paris. It was breathed by Plato and Mozart, by Pol Pot and Hitler. Its winds kissed the cheeks of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Sarah, Isaiah, Jesus, Peter, and Paul. Same air. Take a deep breath. Is also in the air that resurrected Jesus breathed as He spoke to His disciples, as He gathered them close, as He prepared them in the upper room. Now, do you know what conspire means now? Do you know what it means for us as the church to be gathered and oriented and claimed and sent and anointed? <coughs> by the living God for the purposes God intends. I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Spirit is or what the Spirit is up to and up to and about. I think first and foremost the Spirit of the living God is very personal. For those disciples and for me and for you, it is Jesus' legacy to us. And first and foremost, it's not an it. It is a who. 
and the Spirit of the living God surrounds us and enfolds us, empowers us, sends us, claims us. You know, Jesus' disciples recognize Him. That's because of the Spirit's person. The Spirit and the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you. There is a Christ connection in the Spirit of the living God. It is not just some mysterious something. It is the mystery of loving God and His precious Son and the Spirit that informs us. And you know, <clears throat> we live in a world that's got all kinds of conversation going on in it about spirits and the cult and all that. This is not that thing. John Bailey, 16th century preacher, theologian, talked about being asked by a dying man to talk to him about heaven. John Bailey said, I did not know what to say to this man. How do you talk about a place you've not been? How do you talk about an experience you've not had? But as this man was preparing for the coming of his own death, he asked Reverend Bailey, Pastor Bailey, what about it? And he said he had a, an inspiration. He said suddenly he heard his dog scratching at the door. And as he heard his dog scratching at the door, he said to the man who had asked, he says, my dog was downstairs. He said, my dog heard my voice and my dog came upstairs. And he knows that I'm on the other side of the door because he hears my voice but he scratches at the door because he wants to come and be where I am, even though he knows nothing about what's on the other side of the door. The Spirit of the living God is like that for us in communicating to us about the nature of the coming kingdom of God, about the love of God, about the fellowship of God's people. The Spirit is personal. Spirit is also inspiration. There are ways, and I have, I have to say, Carla, I think about you when I think about this. You know, there is a difference between practice and when some music is being performed in the context of the service itself. The Spanish dancer, Pilar Rioja, talks about duende. The duende is the difference that elevates the performance, the act, in the context of the intended performance above what we do when we're just practicing. God does that through the Spirit of the living God for you and for me when we are being called upon in service. Not because we have it naturally endowed in our own being to, to do that, but because God raises the bar and lifts us up through the power of the Spirit. On that day, on that first Pentecost, there are about 120 Christians who walked and talked with the resurrected Jesus. But by the end of that day, there are thousands. And it is because of the amazing capacity of the Spirit of the living God to inspire. One other thing we can say about the Spirit of the living God is it is transformation. The Spirit transforms circumstances. <clears throat> we may not be able to describe God's Spirit. We may not be able to quantify God's Spirit, but we know God's Spirit is there. I, I had an experience when we were at the beach week before last, and I have had it before. The 
first time I remember it, having it was when a niece, Sarah, had a little boy named Bradley, and Bradley was at the beach for the first time. It was a windy day. One of those days that is just perfect in God's creation. The wind was there, and Bradley was experiencing wind in a way he had never experienced it before. I saw the same thing with our granddaughter Phoebe this week and a half ago out on the beach having the wind there and a child feeling it on her face and reaching for it. Feeling like I can catch it. It's there. I know it's there. I can't see it. I can't tell you about it, but, it, but it's there. And watching those children try to catch the wind was a powerful thing. The Spirit of the living God is like that. It is present. It is transformations. Transformations are not the same. I, I remember one time hearing somebody talk about, boy, if we could just send Billy Graham, and Billy Graham was still alive, if we could send Billy Graham back to China, I have heard that Billy Graham was converting 300,000 people a day in China. Can you imagine if we could just have Billy Graham day by day by day by day in China? I remember a response that the person making that comment got when it was said to them, at that rate, China would never be converted. But on the other hand, if one person shares the good news with another person, and the next day they both share good news with another person. And day by day by day, people are being good news. China would be completely converted in two years. The Spirit is transformation. The Spirit has a dynamism and power we cannot comprehend more of the time than not we suppress the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the living God is also relational. We can forget what is going on in that community in Jerusalem on that day and we can forget what is going on in our own lives and in our own communities of faith. I can't wait for us all to be back in here together. I hope you can't wait for us to all be back in here together. But I do want you to know the Spirit of the living God is all about our being knit together in ministry together. I'm going to remind you of a text from 1 Corinthians. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same <coughs> God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another the various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Just as one body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit is about knitting us together. The Spirit is about empowering us in transformational ways, in personal ways, in 
ways that change it all for the glory of God. Will we breathe the air of the Spirit that surrounds us as the people of God for the glory of God? Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us stand and say what we believe using these words from a brief statement of faith. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the Word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries in the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people's long silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Let us offer our gifts and our tithes for the glory of God. Let us worship.
sustains us for our lives. Accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that these tithes and offerings might be the fulfillment of your will and our giving and might serve your will and our doing in the world. These things we ask in Christ's name and for his sake. Love and serve the Lord.